if God's people were obedient, we could not have jokes on the pulpit. We could not have uh, some cruel messages, settling of grudges on the pulpit. It's because men are, have been deserted by angels. Don't just go and appear to the front of God's people in their pulpits in care meetings and local church pulpits when you are not in harmony with God's will or present true proclamation at this time. Thank you, my brothers and sisters, for joining us on this platform, Show Me God Ministry Online Camp. This is day number four. Day number four. God bless you for sticking with us from the beginning, for worshiping together uh, on this platform. I thank you also for sharing the links with your friends. I noticed that the views are increasing. Somebody's doing his work out there. God bless you so much. Let us partner together in preaching the gospel. Please share the link. I'd like to welcome those who are on the platform for the first time. God loves you. You are going to be blessed tonight. Um, our theme, just a reminder, our theme for this online camp is called Fair Mine in the Camp. Fair Mine in the Camp. My topic for today my topic for today under that theme is called Why Angels Don't Stand with Our Preachers on the Pulpit. Why Angels Don't Stand with Many of Our Preachers on Our Pulpits in the Local Church and at Camp Meetings. Why Angels Don't Stand with Certain Church Members, even in the homes where they stay. We are going to learn why and have opportunity to repent so that we may be ready for the second coming of Jesus. I know that many people are preparing to go for care meetings in the next two, three, four weeks or next month to come. Now, this online camp is designed by the Lord to fire us up to go to our camp meetings with the right mind, right attitude, that the presence of the Lord may be manifest in our midst, bearing in mind while living in the very last days. Signs of the times are now too plain to be doubted. Last day events is written by E.G. White, is fulfilling line upon line. Hurricanes, strange fires, earthquakes, natural disasters, the turmoil in the morality of nations are climaxing, pointing to one thing, the soon coming of Christ, we ought to be more serious than ever before uh, when we go out to worship the Lord. Now, uh, our key text that we always begin with is Amos 8, verse 11. Some of you now know it by head. That's fine. Those who are just coming in, please, if you have a Bible there, just turn uh, to the book of Amos and see Amos 8, verse 11. It says, Behold, the days come, says the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the word of the Lord. So God is talking through the prophet Amos, a prophecy that is disturbing, that in the last days there will be severe famines, not only famines of bread and butter issues, but a famine of hearing the word of of the Lord. The pure living bread from the pulpit will be scarce. There will be many preachers preaching, but it's not the word of God. It's not the present truth. There is a famine of the three angels' messages in our campsites. There's a famine of the sanctuary message in the ministry of Jesus in the most holy, a great famine in many churches and many uh, campsites. God's people are being shortchanged somehow. We are supposed to be preaching and hearing and learning the present truth that our faith may correspond to the times we are living in. If Jesus entered the most holy in 1844 and they intercede for us and then the investigative judgment is taking place, our faith must be affected by what's going on in the most holy. But how scarcely is reference made 
to the ministry of Jesus up there. There's a famine, a severe drought of the book of Daniel and Revelation. And so God is not pleased. He is not pleased. And so angels will not stand up and go to the pulpit with self-styled messengers who masquerade as God's people while shortchanging his people of the very present truth. And so I want to pray that it's time for us to look for the living bread. The Bible says, blessed is he that hears, they that hear and they that read the prophecies of the book of Revelation and Daniel. So I want to encourage each one of you to revisit these prophetic books for they were designed by God for such a time as this. Now, uh, many people are coming from camp meetings malnourished, not making heads or tails of what's happening in the most holy. And so probation will close. The sealing time will close. The time of the latter rain will bypass and the men will be left unsaved. Why? Because of the nature of our pulpit today. And this message is designed to revive every honest seeker of truth. The famine must end. The famine must end. There is sanction should not be given to joking ministers who don't preach the present truth, who are there to declare words that are not coming from on high. And so let's read together and see what God has in store for us today. It says, now when our preachers and teachers are deserted by angels, because the angels are very angry with many people who impose themselves before the congregation with no content, with no content from the most holy place. Men who have not been to the mercy seats in the most holy to partake of the mercies and the compassion of Christ are very brutal in their teachings, in their interpersonal relations. They discourage souls and drive people away from God. Angels withdraw from such agents who are doing the work of the enemy. And uh, says now they deprive God's people of the angelic messages of our time. The angelic messages are the three angels' messages. And so let's pray for all those who come up to stand in front of God's people, that God may give them the messages. And they themselves must spend time with God before camp meeting. Like Moses went into the mount 40 days until his face shone with the glory of God, then came down to speak to the people. Some people come without partaking of the divine nature. So they start waffling, waffling from the pulpit and weary the congregation with unsanctified messages, populist messages, self-aggrandizement messages, self-promoting messages. You see, and uh, I've, so I've seen that when uh, some people uh, are not oiled up with the olive oil of the Holy Spirit, when they have no oil, they actually look up for scriptures to attack their brethren, some of their brethren in the congregation to denounce some minister, some elder, or some member there, hiding their venom behind a text. That is spiritual depravity. The Bible says, then Peter stood up, filled with the Holy Spirit, and he spoke stinging words until people said, until, until people were stung in their hearts, and they said, what shall we do, brethren? And he said, repent and be baptized. He stood up, filled with the Spirit. Don't stand up before God's people, whether you're a woman, a man, a youth, when you're not filled up with the Spirit. And you've got to spend time in the upper room to fill up like the disciples, like Peter. Then only can you speak. God and his angels do not use spiritless ministers, spiritless laymen, spiritless evangelists and singing groups. They will flee from them. I pray that... Uh, this year's care meetings will be spirit-filled with spirit-filled messengers, spirit-filled singing groups. Everything should be spirit-filled because we are living in the times of the latter rain. And so let's read together a quotation here from the pen of inspiration. She says here, at our camp meetings, present truth is to be presented in clear lines. At our camp meetings, 
what should be presented? Present truth. By present truth, we mean the truth that corresponds to our time. I'll give you an example. The present truth in Noah's day was the message of the flood. Salvation depended on how people took Noah's message of the judgment concerning the flood. And so the present truth of our time is the three angels' messages. And the three angels' messages encompass Daniel, Revelation, and the sanctuary. So at our care meetings, she says, present truth is to be presented in clear lines. The third angel's message is to find its place in the world. Daniel is to stand in his lot and, and place, bearing his message that the time of the end is near. Friend, we don't need to be very uh, to be to, uh, to be very rich in order to understand what is being said here. God designs that at our camp meetings. Preachers and teachers must preach the present truth of the three angels' messages. The messages upon which hang the salvation of men and hang the destiny of the world. Noah preached his message for his time. Some of us don't want to preach the message for our time. And the men who claim to be God's servants are so ignorant, so mum and dumb about the present truth that they waste God, the time of God's people, wearing them with uh, uninspired narrations and speeches. Sometimes they make up with jokes and false doctrines and compromising statements, populist messages. Let's just come back to the standard. Why angels don't stand up with many of our preachers, singers, elders in our pulpits is because men are disobeying God's will for this present time. Last day events, page 16 says, let the watchmen now lift up their voice and give the message which is present truth for this time. Let us show the people where we are in prophetic history. In our camp meetings, in our local churches, the watchmen, the preacher men, uh, the shepherds, the pastors, uh, they must now lift up their voices to give the message which is present truth for this time and show the God's people where we are prophetically speaking. Prophetically speaking, we are living at a period called the time of the great atonement, which began in 1844 and will close with the close of probation. All focus and attention is on Jesus, our high priest, as he performs his final ministration of his work in heaven. Why being mum and dumb about this essential truth? Friend, I want to believe uh, we need to sharpen up as God's servants, as God's people, even ordinary church members. You are not allowed to be ignorant of the present truth. Study for yourself the Bible. If you wait for a pastor to explain this to you, you may be disappointed until the close of probation. Let every branch abide in the vine and take the sap of present truth into himself, into his family, and study the counsels of the spirit of prophecy, the testimonies, and the Bible. I want to thank God for this online camp, Show Me God Ministry, ordained of God to arouse God's people to the standard of our time. I want to thank those who support Show Me God Ministry to do what it is doing. God bless you a million times. We need to partner together to do God's work. Some on the supply chain and us on the front lines. I want to invite you, friend, if it is your pleasure to partner with us, please do contact us, give us a note, we'll give you the details. We must preach together. The time of no buy, no sale is coming very fast. Where cash will be useless at that time. Now is the time to use our means in the work of the Lord. Now listen to this. God's, God's ideal for his gospel ministers and his lay preachers and church members is in the most holy place. His ideal for ministers, members, preachers, his ideal is in the sanctuary. If Noah preached the truth of his time, the truth of our time is the sanctuary. If you are so skilled in the sanctuary taught by God and his angels, you shall find that the whole Bible is summed up in the sanctuary. 
When you say preach, present truth of the sanctuary, it doesn't mean this, uh, do away with other chapters of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, and the like. No, they are all fused in the three angels' messages. It takes the Spirit of God to show you the connection. Tonight, I'm going to show you the connection of the three angels' messages with the sanctuary. I prayed hard to find out from God, what is, is there a connection, Lord? Teach me, my Lord Jesus. Show me if there's a connection between the sanctuary message and the three angels' messages. And he answered my prayer, and I'm going to share with you what he showed me. Let's start in Exodus 25, verse 18. Back to the Mosaic sanctuary. Back to the Mosaic sanctuary. We should camp around the sanctuary in our camp meetings, in our local churches, in our families to study the sanctuary. For the way of the Lord is found in his sanctuary. Any minister who shuns the sanctuary needs to go back to be re-schooled again in the wilderness. For everything proceeds out of the sanctuary. Any lay preacher, any evangelist, no matter how popular, if he shuns the sanctuary, he needs to be re-schooled. Back in the uh, sanctuary school, Exodus 25 verse 18 says, Thou shalt make two cherubims. Those are angels. We talked about them. Cherubims of gold, of beaten work, shalt thou make them. And in the two ends of the mercy seat. And make one cherub on one end and the other cherub on the other end. Of Even of the mercy seat shall he make the cherubims on the two ends thereof. Verse 20. And the cherubims shall stretch forth their wings on high. Covering the mercy seat with their wings and their faces shall look one to another toward the mercy seat shall the faces of the cherubims be. Now these cherubims, I talked about them yesterday, they are angels who um, Moses was told to make everything according to the pattern he saw in, he he saw in heaven. He saw angelic worship in the most holy and God said, make two cherubims, golden. One on the left, one on the side of the mercy seat above the ark, make them bowing down, looking at each other with their wings covering the mercy seat. We decoded that yesterday. Please look at day number three yesterday. It's posted on Facebook and on YouTube to do yourself justice. Did you know, my friends, that these two uh, cherubims in the Mosaic Sanctuary bowing down reverently are teaching reverence in worship? Reverence in worship, the fear of the Lord in worship, they are looking down on the mercy seat in the ark. They are, they, are, they are so appreciative of the law of God as a reflection of his character. May I announce to you tonight that the three angels' message start here. That is the message of the angels starting from the sanctuary, expanding to the book of Revelation. The very principles we find in the mosaic sanctuary with the cherubims bowing down before the mercy seat, and appreciating Worshipping God, understanding his redemptive mercies, his compassion, his grace, his abundance in goodness. The Lord who is uh, merciful and gracious. They look at this and they worship him and praise him. Now, angels are designed by God to communicate with men. Let me give you an example. The book of Revelation says, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to him to show unto his servants. And he sent and signified it by his angel to John. So God gave the revelation of Jesus to Jesus. Jesus gives it to the angel, cherubim, seraphim. The angel communicates the revelation message to Pastor John, to Pastor John, to Elder John, to Evangelist John. Can you see the protocol? God has messages to be proclaimed. So John was told, what do you see, right? And he sent copies to the churches. Smyrna, Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, up to Laodicea. Broadcast, share the messages. Pastor John did not share his messages, his own originated messages. He did not show his own scholarship on the pulpit. He only simply passed on. The revelation that came from God through Christ, his angel, to himself. May I announce this to everyone. God is still willing to send angels, seraphims, and cherubims to gospel ministers and laymen who have the attitude of John to listen to God, to hear the voice of angels. 
Why angels are not standing up with many of our pastors in our pulpits is because they don't listen to the angels. Many of them are full of their own information. And they shun the three angels' messages. So angels withdraw from them. That's why many people say when they're coming from camp meeting, they say it was boring. The preacher man was sending us to sleep. He had no content. He had no oil. The elder had no oil. The layman had no message. But Pastor John had a message from God through Christ, through his angel. So angels are willing to communicate messages of God through Christ from the most holy around the mercy seat, from around the ark to the servants of God who are like John on earth, that they may broadcast to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. If God's people were obedient, who could not have jokes on the pulpit, who could not have uh, some cruel messages, settling of grudges on the pulpit, is because men are, have been deserted by angels. And so they shun the present truth. So we hear of many messages that have nothing to do with the most holy place, with the mystery of Jesus. And people who, some of the people who preach these things are called powerful because of their hypnotic powers, their mesmerism. They know how to deceive and to mesmerize and excite people with nothing. We want people with the content at this time. Probation will soon close. Blessed are those servants of Jesus who are like Pastor John, who, who obey the instructions of angels. Such men and women are enjoying angelic visitations. I want to share a little experience with you, friends. In my home where I stay, since 2017, the Lord has taught me to pray, sometimes waking up very early in the morning, 2 a.m. and things like that. But uh, in the past two, three years, I've had a, a new phenomenon. I hear a soft knock on my door. At first, I used to think it was my two boys uh, would come from their spare bedrooms to knock at my door. Yeah, I suspected that there was a problem. When I woke up, found nobody there. I was worried. Went to their bedrooms, found, found them asleep. Two, three times it happened. Four times. The fifth time it happened. Soft knock, you hear it. I said, Lord, who is knocking at my door? When I looked at my time, it was prayer time. Now, since that time when I hear the knock, I no longer go to my spare bedrooms to check on my boys. I know it is the messenger of God who is saying to me, wake up, it's time to pray. I said, Lord, one of the days, if I found favor in your sight, let your servant come through right into the bedroom or call me out. I want to see him and hear what he hears from Christ from Christ for me. But Ellen White says, in these last days, the servants of God are going to be uh, visited by angels and the angels will be talking to men and women. It is your privilege, my friend, uh, to receive cherubims and seraphim straight from Jesus. When you're a preacher, man, when you're a teacher, evangelist, don't go in front of the people with no content. You become a curse. It is better for you not to go up there. You cause a severe famine, a severe drought, spiritual drought in the church, and the people come back complaining from camp meeting because of an inspired content. As John received the visions and messages of God through the angels and published them, so must the end time faithful servants of God, like Pastor John, present the present truth of God from the most holy and publish it everywhere. The sanctuary message should be awash in our communities. If our singing groups uh, spend time in the most holy, they would receive inspiration from Jesus through his angels and he would guide them what to sing and how to sing. What do we see today? Reggae. What do we see today in some of our worship circles? Pop music. What do we see today? Rumba type of music. What do we see today? Discothic-like music with mesmerizing, hypnotizing spirits that men go into some kind of a frenzy and hysteria and start jumping up and down 
and dancing and uh, twisting and gyrating their hips in sinful and suggestive ways. My brothers and sisters, we don't need any worldliness in the holy camp of God, in the holy churches of God. I urge you, angels will flee from you if you carry on in this habit. We want to go uh, to camp meeting and come back blessed. We want to be blessed in our local churches. I think care should be taken in the selection of preachers and teachers. It's not that one has a, a certificate in theology that is qualified to preach. Men who don't have content should be given other assignments as administrators or something else. Let those anointed by God with the content be given the chance to preach. To deny them is a sin against God, which must be punished on some day. Let's read on, friends. Uh, who are the angels in Revelation 14? I saw the three angels fly. Who are the angels? Well, are we going to see cherubims flying in mid-air preaching? Let, let's hear what the pen of inspiration says. You see, if you are a man of God, you must dig into the Bible and dig into the spirit of prophecy to come out with a holistic truth. It is so sad today that many of our preachers and teachers, even in camp meetings, in local churches, they do not quote the spirit of, uh, spirit of prophecy books. They don't quote Ellen White. They have no place for her. But it, it, the spirit of prophecy is uh, one of the fundamental pillars of our faith. Revelation 12, verse 17, the dragon was angry with the woman, went to make war with the children who keep the Ten Commandments and have the testimony of Jesus. Revelation 19, 10 says the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. How dare that many end time preachers hardly or don't even at all quote the spirit of prophecy. Those who are searching for truth, you can now tell uh, some of the tricks of the evil one. He wants to weaken our confidence from the spirit of prophecy councils. And E.G. White says, those who lose confidence in the testimonies are not going to make it in the time of trouble. If we understood the Bible properly, there was no need of the spirit of prophecy gift from God. But because we are dull, he gave us a lesser light to lead us to the greater light. As for me in my house, we will stick to the old time religion. We will stand by uh, the commandments of God, by God's grace and the testimonies of Jesus. Every day of the year, for the past I don't know how many years, we choose a devotional book from the testimonies. We read it with my family. I don't know how many books we have read through. I want to prepare my family for the kingdom. They must be rooted in the word in spirit of prophecy, how much more should the servants of God, those who claim to be his servants, how much more should they be quoting from these books? They cause a spiritual famine in the camp and speak their words, philosophies, deductions, and the court doctors and professors. We don't need that. We don't need that. We just need, and that saith the Lord. You cause a drought in the church. Who are the angels? Revelation 14, verse 6 says, I saw another angel fly in the midst of the heaven, having an everlasting gospel to preach to them that dwell on the earth, to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. Many of our people, they do not know how to decode this message because they were never fed with it in their camp meetings or in their local churches. Many of them just know how to put on a T-shirt written, three angels' messages with pictures of angels. That's all. To say what is the three angels' messages, you'll be disappointed. You'll be so disappointed. This is what camp meeting is meant to, to be for, to educate and equip and empower every member of God to be well acquainted with the present truth of the three angels. The sin of the ignorance of God's people shall be charged heavy on negligent gospel ministers. I'm a gospel minister also. I'm not being hard on anybody. I'm just being hard on myself as well. This message is just only meant to mo motivate us to come back to the standard. Not to attend care meeting as a mere ritual, not to go to the pulpit as a mere ritual, to showcase our talents in learning. There is a purpose why God wants these things done. Now these angels are flying. I'm going to, to come back to the, to the three angels' messages, but let's find out from the pen of inspiration. Who are the angels? 
the angels are represented as flying. The book called Life Sketches, page 429. The angels are represented as flying in the midst of heaven, proclaiming the, uh, to the world a message of warning, having a direct bearing upon the people living in the last days of Earth's history. So the flying three angels' messages, they have a message calculated for people living in the last days. Don't preach to us like we live in the Stone Age. We are now living in the last days. We need a message that corresponds to the last days. No one hears the voice of these angels, for they are a symbol to represent the people of God who are working in harmony with the universe of heaven. Men and women, enlightened by the Spirit of God and sanctified through the truth, proclaim the three messages in order. Did you hear that? The three angels' messages in Revelation 14 are now symbolic. They are not literal angels. We've learned much from literal angels. Now, the three angels who are flying in mid-air with the three angels' messages represent God's people, God's ministers, God's elders, God's men and women on earth who are working in harmony with Christ in the most holy on the end time day of atonement. They are receiving messages from angels of Jesus and are in harmony with him like John on the island of Patmos. They are sanctified with the olive oil, the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of missions. To, and they proclaim the angelic message, angelic given messages to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. So my brothers and sisters, ministers who don't cooperate with angels are not part of this three angels group. They're not represented in this group. Laymen, evangelists, church members who are not obedient in working in harmony with, of, with God's will to have the present truth proclaimed at this time. They may be in the church, but they are not part of the remnant workers of God. Full stop. Make your election sure. Be part of the three angels' messages. Listen to what the angels are whispering to the servants of God. Now, Review and Herald, uh, 1904. Review and Herald says, We see before us a special work to be done. We are now to pray as never before for, whole, for the Holy Spirit's guidance. Let us seek the Lord with a whole heart that we may find him. We have received the light of the three angels' messages, and we now need to come decidedly to the front. God's remnant people who are represented as flying angels, flying cherubims, flying seraphims, are those men and women who are working in harmony with the God's will for this time. He says, these have received the light of the three angels' messages. And they must come boldly, decidedly to the front. Don't just go and appear to the front of God's people in their pulpits and camp meetings and local church pulpits when you are not in harmony with God's will of present true proclamation at this time. You are not the part of the flying angels. Count yourself out, but you can count yourself in when you choose to obey. Start studying the book of Daniel Revelation Start studying the sanctuary, start going back in the wilderness sanctuary and draw from there precious truth. Angels will visit you to show you what must be done at this time. They must now come boldly to the front. No longer time to be silent when uh, uh, untimely messages are being proclaimed uh, to weary God's people while the devil is stealing on us on time. Councils for the church, page 58. The three, angels, the, the three angels of Revelation 14 represent the people. They represent the people. They are not literal angels. They represent the people who accept the light of God's messages and go forth as agents to sound the warning throughout the length and the breadth of the earth. Jesus says you are the light of the world. So the three angels' messages represent people represent men and women who are sanctified, who are visited by angels like John with revelations of Jesus from the most holy place. Somebody say amen. Don't doubt and worry about the 144,000 three angels' messages. If you are not part of the remnant workers, come, count yourself out of the 144,000. For there are people who receive messages from God, messages of mercy, 
messages of grace to proclaim to the whole world. No wonder why some religious men are so cruel and evil and scheming and plotting. It's because they are not visited by angels from the mercy seat and they receive no communication from the throne of mercy. That's why they don't show mercy to their fellow brethren and fellow ministers. They are cruel. Some God's work will have to move faster when some men are dead, for they are blocking the work. They want to dictate how things are, should, should be done in God's work. They want to prescribe what messages should be preached. The time has come to hear from Jesus and his angel straight and go and proclaim the message. I want to read the Great Controversy, page 88. So, sorry, Great Controversy, page 606, 1888 version. Thus the message of the third angel will be proclaimed as the time comes for it to be given with greatest power. The Lord will work through humble instruments. The Lord will work through humble women, humble men, humble pastors only, humble youths, humble singing groups only. The others who are not humble, they are not part of the remnant workers. You will work through the humble instruments, leading the minds of those who dedicate themselves to his service. The laborers of the three angels' messages will be qualified rather by unction of the Holy Spirit. The loud cry, the latter rain, the baptism of the latter rain will qualify men who are humble and are searching for truth. These laborers will be qualified by the unction of the Spirit than by the training of literal institutions. While going to college is very good, while to going to theological colleges is excellent, but unless someone is filled by the Spirit of God, E.G. White says, there are so many who have the right doctrine, the right theology, but a wrong spirit, they will not be in the kingdom of God. And she says that in heaven there will be many who have the wrong theology, a wrong doctrine, but the right spirit, they will be there. So friend, when the disciples had learned three and a half years at the feet of Jesus, that's a degree program, three and a half years, Jesus said, you're not yet qualified. Go in the upper room until you are qualified by the Spirit. Some people are counting on paperwork only, not on the qualification of the Spirit. So those who are qualified by the Spirit will give the three angels messages, men of faith in prayer, will be constrained to go with holy zeal, declaring the words which God gives them through the angels, just like Pastor John on the island of Patmos. So my friends, we are a mixed multitude. That's what I believe. Not all that say, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom. But those who are past, like Pastor John, humble, prayerful, seeking for truth, receiving visions and revelations, and messages to preach from Jesus through his angels, declaring the will of Jesus in camp meetings, in local churches, they shall be saved. They shall be sealed. They shall be part uh, of those who shall be saved in the last day. So angels like men are the ones who are referred to as three angels uh, who are preaching the entire message. Now let's go briefly to the three angels' messages. And I saw another angel, Revelation 14, 6, Fly in the midst of the heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to them that dwell on the earth and to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. These are men and women who are obedient and are working in harmony with the Lord, receiving light from the angelic host around the mercy seat. The mercy seat, now they say they fly in the midst of the heaven. Angels fly around the throne. They fly uh, in the midst of the heavens. It says now... Uh, Flying here denotes speed, swiftness. There are men and women who are swift to do God's work, not swift to commit sin, swift to plot against others. They are swift to preach the three angels' messages. They are God's minute men. Any minute God calls them, they go. They are not men and women of excuses and doubt. You see, they fly in the midst of the heaven, above the world. These are men and women who have conquered the world and everything in it. The gravity of sin does not pull them back to the ground. There is no, they have no interest in the earth that interferes with their service to Christ. I know some people, when there is a soccer match on a Sabbath, they will not come back to church in the afternoon or they will not come to church at all to watch their favorite team play. The earth is still pulling them to the ground. 
Others, if this business, that business, that pulls them away from the Sabbath, these are not the ones. Those who fly above, they've conquered the world and everything in it. The last few persons in there, adulterous sins, they've conquered. Nothing stops them. Those who have not overcome Satan in the world are not part of the remnant people. So angels will flee from them. They will not stand up with them on the pulpits. They are still in the world, end of the world. They were having an everlasting gospel. Everlasting gospel is just a summary of the mercy seat. The cherubims look into the mercy seat. They see God's redemptive love, forgiving love, sacrificial love. God who offered his own son that sinners may be saved through him. So angels whisper to John like pastors, to John like elders, uh, to preach the everlasting gospel of Jesus is represented by the mercy seat. So servants of God like John, who have received messages of the angels, who bow before the mercy seat, proclaim with a loud voice the message of redemption. Jesus will give you a second chance. Jesus will forgive. Come, uh, no matter how sinful you are, God accepts you through Christ, through the blood of the Passover, the cross, the cross of Jesus must be lifted up in every camp meeting, every local congregation. From men, we have learned from angels. The moment you see a man lifting up himself and his qualifications, pray for that man, for he has not been in the most holy and has not been visited by angels. The world needs an everlasting gospel, the mercies of God that can save to the uttermost. No matter how sinful people are, people need hope at this time. They don't, they don't need to be crushed in their hearts. They don't need to leave camp meeting uh, disgraced, embarrassed by a preacher man or a teacher. Uh, you know what I'm saying? If we are stuck to the three angels' messages, we shall be merciful and we shall be examples of the everlasting gospel's transforming power. We will speak mercifully to God's people and point them to their Savior. Now they are saying, preach to every uh, nation, kindred, tongue, and people. This is an urgent message, global message, three angels' messages for this time to prepare a people for the second coming of Jesus. Let's read on. They were saying with a loud voice, fear God, fear God, give him the glory. Angels in the cherubims in the sanctuary bow reverently in the fear of God over the mercy seat and the ark. And they whisper to John like, pastors and elders to declare the fear of the Lord in camp meetings, in local local con church congregations into the whole world. They want men to tell them how they angels fear God in the most holy, that men and angels may be on the same platform in their reverence for God. And so let's read together what is to fear God. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the duty of man. To fear God is to keep his commandments. That's why the angels are bowing down over the mercy seat, uh, which is above the ark with the Ten Commandments. Angels cover the ark. They are, it is precious to them. They stretch their wings over it. It reflects the character of God. And so they whisper and inspire godly men and women on earth who are now cherubim-like, cherubim-like, seraphim-like men, Seraphim like women, preachers, teachers, to tell the congregations to fear the Lord and keep his commandments. Friend, there's a famine in our camp meetings in our local churches. The fear of the Lord is now scarce. People are sinning and are not being rebuked even. The law of God is hardly mentioned in many uh, discourses. The Sabbath of the Lord is not mentioned in many discourses. Yet the mark of the beast is gone, a false Sabbath in the place of the real. Now when the false one comes and God's people are not aware of the real one, how holy it is, how angels reverence it. How many people receive the mark of the beast because of a minister, an evangelist who has not done his work? I want to thank God for this message. Keep the commandments, fear God, give him the glory. The glory of God is his character. When angels look into the mercy of God and into his ark, they see his, the trans, transcript of his character, God of goodness, benevolence, love, God of justice. And they partake of the divine nature. 
they partake of the glory of God. And the angels whisper, like they did to John, they tell them what to preach. Preach to men that they must give God the glory. They must come into the most holy and study and behold Jesus and the Father on the mercy seat. Jesus said, come boldly to the throne of grace that they may partake of the grace of God and reflect his likeness, his character in their interpersonal relations. And then they say, for the hour of his judgment is come. The angels are inspiring the servants of God to talk about the judgment, the investigative judgment, the book of life, the book of sin, the blotting out of names, the retention of names after which Jesus comes. How long has it been since you heard such messages in your local church or in your camp meetings? There is a famine of the word of the Lord. When God's servants, preachers, teachers, musicians are insubordinate, and they don't listen to God and his angels. The angels withdraw from them. And the result is a terrible spiritual drought. I want to appeal to you tonight as we close. Would you like to enjoy the company of angels? That they may visit you. To wake you up to pray. They visit you with revelations from God. And show you what to teach and share with friends and neighbors. If it is the desire of your heart that you don't want to be deserted by angels in these last days. Bow with me as we pray, as you prepare for your next camp meeting. Go with the right attitude. I also want you to pray for every minister of God, both layman and formal. Pray that the Lord may bring them into the most holy before they stand before the people. If you are there, let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you tonight for speaking to us in such a solemn way. Thank you, Lord, for telling us about the angelic hosts and how they visit your servants to give them messages to declare at this time. I commit my brothers and sisters on the platform who are convicted that this message is for them, and they are saying, Lord, please send your angels to visit us with messages from Jesus and give them wings of power and of the Holy Spirit to fly around with the word of God, to share it, and also to pray for gospel ministers and evangelists who may not be coming up to the standard Help them to lift them up in their arms of faith that God may anoint his ministry for the finishing of the work. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, my brothers and sisters, for your patience, for sticking with Show Me God Ministry on day number four. Uh, let's meet again same time tomorrow night for a more powerful message from the most holy place. I want to say, those who have not yet subscribed to Show Me God Ministry, please do visit our YouTube channel so that you may be constantly receiving messages like this. And I also encourage you to partner with us. We want you to partner with us to help us to do this work without any hiccups. We appreciate your generous donations, your prayers, and your support in any way. Some give us technical advice, those who are in the media ministry. They share ideas with us. Friends, we are to team up as God's children and do our part. God bless you until we meet tomorrow. Do take care.